the story that seemingly nobody but this guy can tell. People are getting kidnapped. People are going missing. This public safety crisis that is happening not just in Chicago, but nationwide. If the police and the news can't or won't help, that's okay, because we can do this ourselves. Basically, Ken Walks summed up in one photo. Fame can be an addiction. More than money, more than material possessions. We all crave to be loved. But how far would you go to be loved? Would you lie? Would you harm others? It's totally gross to use tragedy to make money. What if your lies spread across the internet? How far would you take it? If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And I keep thinking about that with all this stuff with Kin Wax. If you catch somebody lying, no matter how small or how big, you have learned now that they have the predisposition to lie. Ken Wax is the latest internet grifter who took things too far until he was exposed due to an FBI mass recruiting email in the smiley face game lore, which resulted in an embarrassing downfall for Ken Wax. I want to apologize for the families impacted for having overlapped this other part of my life in this, this in an inappropriate setting, it won't happen again. And now this TikToker influencer's obsessive investigation has spiraled into fierce backlash and the loss of his job. Choosing the lives of people who were murdered in a way promote an app is absolutely disgusting. Before we get into this video, I want to put out a quick disclaimer. This video goes into some serious topics, like the topics of death and unaliving someone, and I will have to censor some words, but hopefully through context clues and censored text that I'll put up on screen, you'll understand what I mean. Before we get into the video, today's video is sponsored by Sempered. Thank you so much to Sempered for supporting the channel. I love continually working with them because I always get to try new scents. Sempered is a fragrance subscription service with a mission to empower each person through scent. Did you have that one perfume or cologne or scent that you would always end up buying that you didn't even know if you really liked, but it was just always your go-to because you didn't know if you wanted to try a full bottle of something new and scary? Well, if so, I think Sempered is perfect for you. Sempered lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try every month for just $17. Every month, you get to pick what you want to receive so there are no surprises. They have perfumes and colognes and a lot of unisex options. With each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply so you can try out fragrances without committing to a full-size bottle, which can cost $100 and some even like $300 to $500. Sempered carries brands like Prada, Gucci, Versace, as well as indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel. Use my code HAPPYMIND55 for 55% off at Sempered. It's just a little over $7 for your first month. Available in the USA and Canada. This month's perfumes that I received are the perfect size summer perfumes in my opinion. This month I received a Sisley perfume called Sisley La Rive. This one is really really interesting to me because it's a fragrance enhancer. So you're supposed to use it in combination with other fragrances and it's something I'll be keeping in my collection. It's a very fresh and uplifting sort of scent. From Maison 21G Paris, I received the scent Terrific Tonka. I love the tonka bean after trying this scent. It really does have that warm sort of nutty flavor, which I never thought I would like, but I really, really love this scent. I would totally wear this out on a date night with that sort of a warm candle lit vibe going. And the last scent I received this month was from Aqua di Parma Magnolia Infinita. This scent is the most summery scent to me. It is like summer in a bottle. So those were the perfumes I received this month. I will be wearing all of them this summer constantly. So thank you so much to Sempered for 
for sponsoring this video and I hope you guys check out Scentbird and if you try these scents, which I highly recommend, I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. And if you do try Scentbird, definitely check out the links below for an awesome discount. And now let's get back into the video. Ken Walks went viral in the spring of 2023 for launching his own one-man social media investigation into what he believed to be a string of social media kings in his local Chicago area. If you are walking home alone by yourself at night in Chicago and a car rolls up and rolls down the window and someone inside the car, unmarked car, beater of a car, asks if you need a ride, do not get in that car. People are people are going missing, people are getting robbed, and we know exactly what's happening. And just because they're not doing anything about it, shows up doesn't mean I'm not going to do something about it. Stay safe, keep your friends safe. Ken Walks' TikTok page has garnered millions of views since he began posting his theory that serial killers across the country are targeting young men at night with free rides home, and then killing them and dumping their bodies in rivers. They all go missing after leaving a bar, club, or a party by themselves at night and they're walking home. How you ask did Ken Walks arrive at this conclusion that young men are being targeted as victims through free rides home? Well, he arrived at this conclusion because of his own experience with a sketchy person when getting a ride home, which he ended up making a video on that went viral. This has now happened to me twice. People are going missing. Like, I think this is some kind of connection. And basically things spiraled from there. People are going missing and then found in the river or lakes days later. This is happening nationwide. The cops and the media are not doing anything or covering it. And Ken Walks even ended up insinuating that law enforcement may even be involved in it all. The cops are just not cutting it anymore. They might be involved. So Ken accumulated a fan base of 1 million followers, mainly through raising alarm on a major public safety problem. I am once again trying to address a serious public safety issue. All I know is that we have a major public safety crisis. It's still a major security problem going on. Public safety crisis that is happening, not just in Chicago, but nationwide. That he claimed news outlets and police departments were completely ignoring. I know why the cops and the media are not doing anything or covering it. Something has to happen before the cops can actually go do something. And a lot of caring and concerned citizens really started to care about his videos. He raised a lot of concern, sympathy, and fear for public safety, and in the process gained a loyal and trusting fan base through his TikTok investigation. And for a while, Ken Walks went completely unquestioned. But eventually, Ken Walks posted some strange and some off-putting things that made people kind of start to wonder what his intentions were. And now fans are accusing the creator of exaggerating or outright falsifying details of his inquests, to the point that Ken Walks was accused of capitalizing off of actual tragedies, people who have passed on, all to promote his startup and his own social media platform. It's totally gross to use tragedy to make money. Which I'm sure I don't have to tell you is just despicable behavior. But who is the man behind this investigation? Before he became Ken Walks' independent social media investigator, who was Ken Walks? Before 2023, Ken Walks was already trying to be an influencer on TikTok. His previous content was about things like life in tech, since Ken Walks has worked in tech and has a background in that topic. And Ken Walks had had a few viral videos and some success on TikTok in that content topic, though it was nothing like what he was about to see with his investigation videos. It seems like Ken Walks kind of branded himself as a smart, trustworthy, and professional person on the platform. Since Ken had a background in tech, I think a lot of people trusted his opinion and outlook, and overall saw him as a pretty smart guy. I even respected Ken's initial content. He called out certain scams. This has to be one of the biggest scams I've ever heard about in my entire life. Talked about the economic state of the world. The top 1% of Americans have more money than the bottom 90% of Americans combined. Let's talk solutions. Let's make the minimum wage 
Livable. It's not money that puts you in the top 1%, although you need 600K annually to be in that 1%. So since Ken Wax's professional background is essential to his social media brand, let's get to know Ken Wax through his LinkedIn profile. You know, where all tech bros go to live, laugh, love, and inspire one another with the latest thing they found that AI can do for them. On his LinkedIn profile, it says Ken Wax is a content creator, ex-Google, business in Insider, New York Post, Fortune, Newsweek, Yahoo News, and more, and based in Chicago, Illinois. Hey, I'm Ken. 9 to 5. By day and by trade, I work as a technical manager at Walmart Connect, where I've been for three and a half years. 5 to 9. Outside of work, I'm a verified content creator aspiring to entertain audiences while simultaneously teaching them something that makes them think. Videos have received a quarter billion views total, roughly. Worked with brands like Dr. Pepper, ClickUp, and ZipRecruiter, among others. I create educational content about anything and everything, covering tech, economics, luxury fashion, brand company history, children's books, career content, as well as food and lifestyle content. So what does this LinkedIn bio say about Ken? Well, first off it says, Ken Wax is a pretty cool guy, a bro boss. But it also says that Ken Wax is an aspiring content creator who seeks to brand himself as a content creator, who establishes himself as a content creator in his LinkedIn profile, which is all a very important thing to know as a sort of baseline before going into the rest of this story because it will come up as we talk about Ken Wax's motivation for doing what he did later on in this story. On March 9th, TikToker Ken Wax posted a video encouraging his followers to avoid what he called a terrifying encounter. This happened to me two times in the last six weeks, he wrote in the caption, describing how he was offered a ride home by a strange car that then sped off. This has now happened to me twice in the last six weeks that I can think of. Like, people are going missing. Like, I think this is some kind of connection. Like, they're probably just waiting for people who are and it's an easy target. Like. Stay safe. Like, do not do it. Car, by the way, that rolled up on me was a late 2000s Toyota Corolla looking car, beige, silver-ish. I love how the car that tried to kidnap Ken Wax, offer Ken Wax a ride, is a Toyota Corolla, the most basic car there is to exist. Car, by the way, that rolled up on me was a late 2000s Toyota Corolla looking car, beige, silver-ish. The first time it was a woman, the second time it was a man. The most reliable. I mean, shout out to people who own a Toyota Corolla. But like, oh, thank you. That's a really detailed description you gave. That really narrows down the search here. Be on the lookout for Toyota Corollas offering rides in the area of Chicago, guys. If a car does approach you, try to get the license plate number. This is organized. This is a group. We need to stay vigilant and we need to get as much information as we can. But instead of, I don't know, seeing the experience as a stranger in a strange car offering Ken a ride home, which is a concerning experience, of course, Ken Wax concludes that, you know, of course, this was all the work of a serial killer. This is organized. This is a group. We need to stay vigilant and we need to get as much information as we can. Like, you can send it all to me if you got anything. After people filled Ken Wax's comment section with their own stories of being approached late at night by strange drivers, Wax began posting that these strange car rides were the missing link that connected a string of fatal drownings in the Chicago River to a serial The method of operating for all of these missing people is exactly the same for the most part. It is guys leaving bars alone by themselves at night, bar, club, party, whatever. And then they never make it home. We know what's going on. I will continue to push this story. Though the Chicago Police Department ruled all the deaths accidental, each of the people found in the river were last seen leaving Chicago bars. These people are leaving bars. Which led Ken Wax to believe that the only possible conclusion as to why they ended up in the river was because they were picked up by strange drivers who unalived them and left them in the river. And they are then offered a ride. 
There's obviously no evidence of them being offered that ride. And then days later, they're found after they were reported missing. The police don't want to investigate this because how do you prove it? How do you prove it? Blaming unexplained deaths on serial killers is a common move on social media, which I think it's important to point out Usually, when there's a true crime case, it starts out with there being unequivocal evidence or proof that there is a killer on the loose in the first place. With the case of Ken Walks, there isn't even substantial proof that there is a killer on the loose. There isn't a pattern between victims, someone leaving clues to be followed. So none of this makes any sense to me personally from the outside looking in. Are you following the logic here as a viewer of why Ken Wax is connecting all of these deaths and, and claiming that they're caused by someone offering people rides late at night? I know how they're going missing. I know how they're all connected, Ken Wax said in a TikTok. I know why the cops and the media are not doing anything or covering it, and I know what we can do about it. You're really gonna tell me that all these people are just falling in, there's no issues for months, and then all of a sudden there's four people who fall into a river or a lake in three weeks? I have not just theories anymore, I have evidence, I know what's going on, and it's so big, and it's so deep, and it's really wild. At least for Chicago, I know what's happening. Nationwide, all I know is that we have a major public safety crisis and nobody goes home by themselves. Nobody's walking home, take an Uber, make sure your friends get there. I have to keep some of these cards close to my chest until I can get the FBI involved because the cops are just not cutting it anymore. They might be involved. I mean, of course it would be easy for viewers to get caught up in the excitement and thrilling aspect of Ken Wax's TikTok videos, like watching a thriller in real time. But let's take a step back here and analyze the facts that Ken Wax is really claiming in his TikTok videos. And let's keep in mind that Ken Wax is talking about real people who were found in the Chicago River. This isn't fun and games. These are real people. Ken Wax is deducing that there is a serial unaliver in the city, all from him and other people in his comment section being offered unsolicited rides. And all of a sudden, because of that, there's a serial unaliver loose in Chicago. And that's enough proof for Ken Walks to make videos like this that are going viral and getting millions of views with no regards to these victims or their family members, with no forethought into how that would make them feel or whether he should look into it a little bit more and be 100% certain that that's the case before claiming something like that. So all of these videos about the alleged serial unalivers in the Chicago area went viral. And then Ken Walks widened his fan base even more on April 4th when he stitched an Austin-based creator named Nick Casablancas. Casablancas' video explains that multiple bodies have been found in Lady Bird Lake, a lake in Austin. Ken Walks explains that the same thing that's happening in Chicago with the unsoliciting of rides at bars and dumping bodies in water is happening in Austin. The same thing is happening in Chicago, in Minneapolis, in Wisconsin, in parts of Ohio, in Pittsburgh, and of course you have the smiley face characters in Boston. So people in Austin saw this video and now began following Ken Walks to stay updated on this alleged serial unaliver, or according to Ken Walks, this group of serial unalivers. This isn't one person, this is a team. This is organized, this is a group. There is a chance that you are almost a victim of an organized crime ring. Who are operating in both Austin and Chicago. Over the course of seven weeks, Ken Walks shared his findings on TikTok, posting homemade maps charting each death expanding his research to major cities across the country, also expanding his following to major cities. There's a serial killer in Chicago, and I was almost one of their victims. Hey Mark, my name's Ken, and I'm sorry we're meeting like this, but I've probably been tagging your video over a hundred times. I'm not sure if you've seen these comments yet. I actually already messaged you on Instagram, but I have been investigating this and covering this since I was almost taken twice just this year. So there's a couple things that I think you can help me with. I've been building a map, and this is you now on my map. So most, most of Ken Walks's investigative work that he does, where he's looking into the serial unalivers, is just putting 
points on a map in certain cities like Houston, Austin, and Chicago. I made my own map with just the information I was able to find online that's publicly available. Not medical reports, not detective reports, just internet and these points on a map are you know unfortunately bodies found people who've reported rides being offered and at what point those rides were offered at what point people were reported leaving bars in certain areas this is my map i made a map of the data that i have for chicago black is where bodies have been found and blue is where people have been missing and Orange is where people were attempted to be picked up. I also have made one for Austin, where blue is where people are missing from. It's all concentrated truly on the same street and black is where they are found. You can see I have all of it keyed out over here. And that's his investigative work. But what does that do? What does that mean? For real though, what does that help solve with anything? What true crime case has there ever been where a person was found because points on a map that were color coded all led to like one specific area. For real though, for re on a real note, what does this solve? Like, does he think all these points on this map are eventually gonna spell out the killer's name or something? It means nothing. There is so much. This is bigger than just Chicago or Austin, Walks wrote. Nationwide, men are going missing under the same circumstances and found days or weeks later. Ken Walks even posted a video alleging that he went to the police station and they did nothing. I am on my way to the meeting with the police. They are trying to stop this meeting from happening. I don't know why. Update, the cops knew who I was, knew I was coming. If the police and the news aren't going to do anything to increase public safety about this and raise awareness, I'm going to do it myself. Whether or not it's all organized, we don't know yet. But for the first time, we can actually do something. Within a few months of starting his murder mystery series, Ken Walks made a name for himself as one of TikTok's leading true crime influencers, amassing more than 1 million followers. Ken Walks also alleged that that these respective cases were not the work of a single person, but of a team working together. Hindsight 2020. Hindsight 2020. You know, what can you do? But there's just, there's one guy who millions are trusting, who's saying basically mass murder is happening around the state. And it's a group of people who are offering free rides to people late at night, dumping them in bodies of water around the country. And it's this like ring of people who are doing it. And now law enforcement also might be involved. And we're all trusting this one guy who's giving out this information. You know, it just all gets to a point where it's all a little too much, you know? There's a rule of thumb for keeping secrets, basically. And it's how many people have to keep the secret starts to limit how long the secret can be kept. So if there's like a big group of people who are all in on this, who are doing this around the country and a group of people in law enforcement might be involved in this, for how long can all of those people keep this under wraps and keep it a secret? And yet one guy with a TikTok profile was able to expose it to light because he was offered a sketchy ride from someone at night one time. That doesn't make much sense. I mean, it's not completely impossible, but it's pretty implausible, you know? We're talking now about probability versus possibility. Also on top of that, this guy Ken Walks keeps saying, I have all the information. I've got all the information. I've got it all figured out, but he's not telling anyone all the information. He's like, I'm going to the police with this information. I'm going to the FBI with this information. That's why I can't tell all of you guys. So it feels like he's stringing everyone along, making himself out to be the hero of the story. But you can only do that for so long until people start to question like, do you really have a story here? Or are you, like I said, just stringing us along? If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And I keep thinking about that with all this stuff with Ken Wax. And if you were unfamiliar with the TikToker Ken Wax before this video, you may be thinking, how could people tie together random people offering rides and bodies showing up in bodies of water to be this massive 
thing of serial unalivers across the country. Well, my friend, my theory at least, is that this has happened not only because of how prevalent true crime has become on social media and the excitement and thrill of the idea of a new true crime story happening in real time, but also because of the concept of confirmation bias. The story of Ken Walks completely capitalized off of both true crime and confirmation bias. The true crime community is massive. It's a huge influence. There's a lot of positives to it and negatives. So Ken Walks' videos really took off and went viral because it really latched on to the true crime community and a lot of people's interests in true crime and true crime stories. Especially if you lived in the cities where this was happening, of course you're gonna care about it. You're gonna be concerned. You're gonna wanna know know what's happening and Ken Walks made himself out to be the only person who knew the truth and the true story. I know how they're all connected. I know why the cops and the media are not doing anything and I know what we can do about it. So of course you're going to want to follow him to stay updated on what's happening. He made himself out to be a trustworthy person who was uncovering the truth. I am going to get a public service announcement out. I am going to raise so much f***ing hell about this issue because people are but Ken Walks also heavily capitalized on confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is our tendency to cherry pick information that confirms our existing beliefs or ideas. And it's important to be cautious of data that immediately confirms or supports our beliefs and views. For example, if bodies are showing up in bodies of water, there are probably a multitude of reasons for why they ended up there. The confirmation bias is so fundamental to your development and your reality that you might not even realize it's happening. We look for evidence that supports our beliefs and opinions about the world, but excludes those that run contrary to our own. So basically, Ken Walks himself may have been more willing or wanting to believe that there was a true crime story to be had here, and his audience may have wanted to believe that as well. So they saw evidence and a connection between drivers offering unsolicited rides and bodies showing up in bodies of water. They saw a link there where it might not have existed. Another important thing to know is Ken himself in one of his TikToks says he talks to a police officer buddy of his who literally says that many people have been known to get and accidentally fall into bodies of water for a very long time and that this has just been a known thing. I talked to my friend who's a cop for an hour today and the reason that foul play isn't suspected is because, I hate to say it, but there has been a long history of people who get and fall in the river. They have video of people, I'm not sure any of these people, following down to the river and falling in and because they're drunk, they're in such a shock state that sadly they pass away. Is it related? I don't know. And yet Ken himself just completely ignores this information and still continues on with his idea that even so, there is this organized group that's planning attacks out across the country. Is it related? I don't know. We're talking now about probability versus possibility. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Is it probable? My friend who's a cop says it's less probable. There are three types of confirmation bias, but the two main types Ken Walks and his audience participate in, either knowingly or unknowingly, are biased attention when you selectively focus on information that confirms your views while ignoring all information that doesn't confirm your views, like any evidence that could confirm that these men were not killed by an Uber driving, lake throwing serial killer and biased interpretation, which is when we consciously interpret information in a way that confirms our beliefs. And I mean, the entire way this conclusion of a gang of serial unalivers spreading across the country was reached is an example of biased interpretation, in my opinion. So Ken walks through, in my interpretation, 
capitalizing off of the true crime community and confirmation bias, developed a loyal fan base who felt he was a respected and trustworthy source for information regarding the facts of what was happening to missing people around the country. His followers were seeing the facts that Ken Walks was presenting to them, but they weren't seeing all the holes that was in his stories. And let's just say, his stories were like Swiss cheese. His stories were standing up on a foundation made of sand, and eventually things started to crumble. Doubts about Ken Wax's sleuthing, lurking, and investigative theories first started to blow up on TikTok in late April as Ken Wax began claiming he was working with the smiley face unaliver investigator. This guy is a private investigator who had been working a case about unsolved unalivers in Chicago and is known as Gannon and famous for his smiley face unaliver theory. Going on to publish a book in 2014 and a recent six-part oxygen series called smiley face killers the hunt for justice basically he is a true crime big time celebrity and ken walks claimed on his tiktok that he's working with this guy to uncover even more about the what i would like to call drive and dive murders that private investigator that showed up on my door sunday night by the way was sent by this man detective kevin gannon if you're familiar with the smiley face theory, then you probably know exactly who he is. In a TikTok about the smiley face investigator, Ken Walks told viewers that the private investigator showed up to his residence unannounced to ask him to be part of the team, suggesting that the man had validated all of his theories about the murders. Somebody just knocked on my door and it's 8.30 at night on a Sunday. And so I go and I check in and it's not someone I know. And so I open and I'm like, what's up? And they're like, hey, my name's X and I'm a private investigator looking into the smiley face group um and they asked me if i'd been in touch with a different detective that someone had put me in touch with so uh, he actually just went back downstairs to secure his parking and uh, he's gonna come back he's in a full black suit and everything so on april 26 wax shared a tiktok video saying he and gannon were now teammates and working together to use his data my team has officially joined his and as they open their investigation into the smiley face Ken wrote in the caption, With all of us working together, we will finally be able to bring these people to justice and get answers for those families. I think this is about to get uh, very interesting, so I'm just going to post this now as like evidence that somebody just came to my house at 8.30 at night on a Sunday night, literally no, had not contacted me previously, um, just to put it out there that something's going on and it uh, looks like we're moving fast, so I'll, uh, I'll try to update you guys after with what I can. Oh, shit. I can't believe this dude just came to my house. This is also so sad too because some of the families of the deceased probably didn't know how their family member passed. Their family member just showed up in this body of water. They didn't have a lot of answers. And when Ken Wax's investigation went viral, they may have heard about it, probably did hear about it. I wonder if Ken Wax was really thinking about that, if he genuinely thought in his mind that he was going to uncover something big and give the families an answer, actually find a massive gang of serial unalivers, or if he knew the entire time that this was a farce and that he would let down a ton of people and the family members of these deceased people. And if so, how can you do something like that knowingly? Because the thing is, these TikToks about this investigator visiting Ken Wax's home is when fans and audience members really, really started to question Ken Wax. Now, I know a lot of people are being swept up by what's occurring in the Chicagoland area or whatever other areas that Ken is investigating. But the thing is, you guys have to do your own due diligence at the end of the day. When families are grieving, the last thing that we want to do is pretend that we have evidence to help solve a case when we may not. And viewers began to become suspicious about whether or not these events actually happened. A big reason why is because Ken Wax never posted a video with this investigator. He was never like, hey guys, this is the investigator. I'm now working with him. Say hi. All right, we're working together. It was just him alone being like, hey, 
This guy's in the bathroom, but he's here in my apartment. Uh, he actually just went back downstairs to secure his parking and uh, he's gonna come back. Or like, hey, this investigator just left. You just missed him, but he was here. Believe me, trust me, bro. The PI private investigator just left. So of course viewers were like, that seems a little suspicious. In response to these doubts, Ken Walks began posting screenshots and email exchanges as evidence that he was engaging with a real detective. He also shared a business card that this detective supposedly gave to him. I am apparently now part of the team. I've been helping a lot with their tech stuff, with the map building. Which also just further sketched out viewers because the business card looked unprofessional. It had like the eye of aura. Is it called aura or hora? I feel like it's called Hora, but I'm sorry if I mispronounce it. And it just, it did not feel like a legit detective's business card. This card that he has, this is his proof. It looks like a card that he got at like a corporate work outing when they had a psychic or something. On April 26th, Ken Walks also told viewers that he had cracked the case. Last night at three in the morning, I cracked the case. Over time, I was able to isolate one guy's experience leaving a bar where he was able to get a license plate of a car. How? In what way? He was able to get a license plate of a car. That's all, that's all the information you're going to give? However, the tide had already begun to turn against walks and viewers became more and more skeptical. There is something wrong with Ken Wax. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And I keep thinking about that with all this stuff with Ken Wax. You know, on the one hand, it's so fascinating. This guy, just like me or you, has cracked the case, he may have found the missing link that connects all of these really terrible crimes. But on the other hand, I'm, I'm a little worried that maybe it's not legit, maybe he has some kind of ulterior motive and he's just making things up. I really don't know. The big red flag for me was when he mentioned getting contacted by a private detective because I make detective content too, and from my experience, private detectives don't look into crimes like this. If you catch somebody lying, no matter how small or how big, you have learned now that they have the predisposition to lie. Around this time, Ken Walks was also claiming that he was being recruited by the FBI and shared the email that showed that he was being recruited. What's funny is that the FBI did try to hire me. They actually tried to recruit me twice. Do the troll my comments that said that that never happened. I have proof. We want you to be a part of the next generation of elite special agents. That was 2021. But when people looked at the email, they saw that this was just like a mass email that the FBI would send out. So let me explain what you just saw. He reached out to the FBI, probably put an application in online, and he never completes his application. So they keep sending him follow-up emails because they want him to finish his application. It says, do not reply. It's an automatic pre-sent email. And he started doing this in 2019, which just reinforces my point that he's wanted to be an investigator or some type of investigative work since 2019. It was just like one of those spam emails that you get from any sort of company and had no significance whatsoever. It did not mean he was far along in the recruitment process of the FBI by any means. And so people were just like, if he was exaggerating that, saying that basically this kind of spam email by the FBI or just, you know, marketing email by the FBI was a recruitment email and he was being recruited by the FBI. If he was exaggerating that, how much else of this is Ken Walks exaggerating? I have a gut feeling bro is playing make-believe, a commenter wrote. This seems off, another weighed in. It's like he's role-playing, lol. But Ken Walks maintains that these accounts are true to reality and that he's been in touch with local police and private investigators. And he told Insider in a statement, I began diligently collecting information and sharing it online, as well as with law enforcement, private investigators, and other authorities in an attempt to bring awareness to these crimes. The biggest tragedy of all, though, is families are still grieving the losses of their sons. And Ken allegedly charged one of the parents $30 for a private meeting and never showed. Though the accounts of this event are spotty and have just been reported online, so I do want to put that out there. Allegedly, one of the victims uncovered in the lake unalived themselves as well. And Ken was saying that this person was the victim of a serial 
father, which is just re-traumatizing the family. It really is despicable. So gradually, more and more people became skeptical that really anything was going on at all, which I feel like people should have felt from the first place, but again, hindsight 2020. And more and more people began to realize that maybe Ken Walks was really just making this whole thing up the entire time. And more TikTokers began to post videos about Ken Walks, kind of saying, um, does anyone else think this guy is maybe full of sh TikToker Meredith Lynch has been at the forefront of attempting to debunk Ken Walks' claims. In her TikToks about Ken Walks, she says he's writing fan fiction about his life. I think this man is writing fan fiction about his life. Lynch also showed a screenshot that Ken Walks posted on his Instagram story where he claimed that he caught two murderers already. Ken goes on to claim that he has caught two already. I don't believe that. I don't think that's true. I don't think that is rooted in reality. It is awful that people are being murdered, but Ken is not, has not caught two murders. I don't buy it. And you know, I'm allowed to not buy it. I don't have to buy it. And I wanted to shout out Meredith Lynch in this video because that's where I personally first heard about Ken Walks in depth and where I really started to look into him and I could not believe what a mess this all was. So after people started to figure out that a lot of this probably is not real, people started to wonder why did Ken Walks post about this in the first place? And really there are two main theories. The first one is that Ken Walks did all of this for social media attention. And the second reason is that Ken Walks' mental health is struggling. He's having a manic episode and delusions of grandeur. Now, of course, I am not a mental health expert, so I have no grounds in diagnosing or saying whether or not he was going through anything mentally. So I'm not even gonna touch number two with a 10 foot pole. But I do strongly believe that Ken Walks was strongly motivated to gain social media attention. If you remember, on his LinkedIn profile, Ken Walks described himself as a social media content creator who was aspiring to educate others and do something big on social media. His Instagram reads as someone who wants to brand himself, wants to be something. It doesn't necessarily read as someone who's unstable or not in a good place mentally or doesn't have it all together. It reads as someone who is very carefully curating and crafting their social media image. Same thing with his TikTok, same thing with his LinkedIn. He's very carefully curating all of his social media profiles, building his social media branding. So I personally believe that Ken Walks' prime motivator for his true crime investigative series was to make it big and go viral. I don't think he necessarily planned it all out. I think he made a video about a sketchy ride, saw a lot of people in his comment section had similar experiences. That video went viral. He saw an opportunity to kind of jump down that rabbit hole and took it. And it got to a certain point where it just went absolutely out of control Control. It got way too far and he had no idea how to reel it back in to the point where the backlash got so massive and Ken Walks idiotically continued to try to profit off of it. The social media tide turned on Ken Walks overnight. Ken has been receiving massive backlash on his videos and claims, especially after authorities cleared the air. Authorities said they found no signs of foul play in the cases of the bodies found in the lake. Social media users said, The search says Ken Walks manic. I'm done. My man's is full-blown manic right now, and you all think he's Sherlock Holmes. I too am schizophrenic. Me when I have a manic episode and no one clocks it. Delusions of grandeur. Still crying and laughing at I cracked the case. TLDR, nothing was cracked. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of making fun of a possible mental health crisis. Like, let's not do that. Though it does bring up a good point that for weeks and months, people were hyping up this guy, 
making him viral on TikTok, taking his word very seriously as if everything was factual, and spreading and sharing his misinformation, not thinking for a second about whether or not he's legit, whether or not his mental health is in a good state, whether or not the information he's sharing is backed up by any science or a factual basis or just like anything beyond what he's stating as if it's true. And it's fascinating. I mean, people say that TikTok is great for spreading important information, and it can be. But this story shows that TikTok can also spread misinformation very, very quickly. So always be careful and think critically about what you're seeing. Even if everything makes sense, a person seems logical and trustworthy, you don't know the person behind the screen. You don't know the full story of what they're presenting. And if someone is presenting an over-sensationalized story and making themselves into the hero of that story and some sort of vigilante at the center of it, there's probably a selfish motivation behind why they're doing that. On top of that, in Chicago, police and authorities have reiterated that none of the nine bodies pulled out of the lake had any suspicious marks or links to foul play. In Austin, Texas, local police stated that there was no proof of foul play in these four cases per Newsweek. Furthermore, in an article entitled Reality Check, there's almost certainly no serial unaliver in Austin. Texas Monthly's Peter Hawley reported that many of the claims spreading online supporting the serial unaliver theory simply aren't true. On the contrary, he noted, amateur investigators like Ken Walks were promoting widespread fear and actually hindering authorities' efforts to look into these cases. But the biggest backlash of all against Ken Walks came after Ken Walks started making more frequent posts about his social media app Foresight that he is, or was, the chief marketing officer and I think co-founder of. Thank you so much everyone who supported me while I do this really important work trying to help these families get answers by checking out the app of the company that I work for, Foresight. It's super cool, it's free. It helps you actually plan stuff better with your friends. It helps you budget for trips and big events. And we have a huge update coming later today. So I really appreciate everyone who's checked it out. Um, I'm the co-founder and the chief marketing officer of a travel tech, FinTech startup called Foresight. And today I closed our first preferred partner. And many people became suspicious that he was just creating this true crime narrative as a way to market his app, or at least that he saw it as a great opportunity to capitalize off of his viral fame through continually pushing his app onto his audience. I do believe that he is taking these tragic and missing person cases and using them to plug his app. It's totally gross to use tragedy to make money, period, the end. I would never mega cringe bleh, to Ken. It's gross. I thought it was gross when I was like, is that Chicago uh, theory, dude? Promoting an app as well? That's weird. And on top of that, the app was bragging about his TikTok social media presence as a part of their marketing strategy, which is a weird thing to be associated with as a professional company. You know, the smiley face gang and all of that. According to Reddit user Lord of the Pings, from their app's start engine page, where they're seeking funding, they specifically call out TikTok as a primary driver of engagement in app downloads. I keep wondering how this guy with a prominent role at a startup finds time to be so heavily into TikTok. It's like he got a little too desperate for followers and views and creeped over into this unethical space. Our serviceable global available revenue is valued at 3.9 billion. That doesn't sound accurate at all. With 80 million total target customers in the US alone. Our CMO has a prominent TikTok following of 709,000 followers as of March 14th, 2023. Foresight produces 600 weekly average installs, and TikTok is a key driver behind the $2.47 cost per install. In addition to the efficiency driven by TikTok, 
The product has also seen an exciting recent uptick in word of mouth growth over the past month, with 255 referral invitations having been sent out by satisfied users. Ken Walks, who's their chief marketing officer, he's the chief marketing officer. His job is to market the app. He goes viral on TikTok. Obviously, his main priority is going to be promoting the company that he's the co-founder and chief marketing officer of. His main role is marketing. And it just feels like in all of that, the deceased people found in bodies of water were really not the priority of Ken Walks at all. And that's really the saddest part of all of this. And on top of that, unfortunately, extremely racist and tweets were found from Ken Walks's past. I have to issue a strong trigger warning for extreme racism and And I'm not even exaggerating. Exhibit A. Exhibit B. I'm sure he probably didn't wish for this on 11, 11, 11. And last, but certainly not least, this. So. This is what happens when you don't create content with integrity. And I think we can start a real big conversation around ethics in content. Meaning the FBI would never even try to recruit Ken Walks in the first place if he said this stuff. So Ken Walks went from internet detective to yet another internet downfall. After Ken Walks lost the trust of his audience, Ken Walks also lost the job with the app he co-founded. In a TikTok Ken Walks posted on May 3rd, Ken apologized for overlapping mentions of his startup with the investigation and said he'd gotten lost in the sauce over the topic. As many of you know, this investigation has been my all-consuming passion over about the last month. And what started as my honest effort to bring more awareness to a serious public safety matter my reporting on this topic has since turned into a contentious subject and I now realize that it's not my place at all to continue chasing this story despite my own personal connection to it with those two attempts on me. I, I bit off a lot. <laughs> I haven't been sleeping as much as I should. I've burnt myself out and I frankly got a little bit lost in the sauce over this story. I acknowledge that it was insensitive to reference my startup on those two occasions and posts pertaining to this case. I'm a passionate guy who's passionate about the stories that I follow and of course about the content that I make. But I made a mistake by intersecting those two parts of my life and I want to apologize for the families impacted for having overlapped this other part of my life in this, this in an inappropriate setting. It won't happen again. And the information about the suspects that my team and I were, have been able to find has been passed to the proper authorities. I've decided to no longer post about this story publicly to prevent further conflict. I. I care so much about this case, I really do, but I realize that I can't report on it while balancing this other pursuit and my life. So, thank you. In a statement to Insider, Ken Walks added he never planned to promote the app, and the references just happened organically. Sure. <laughs> to be honest, I don't buy that for a second. Oh no, I'm not promoting Adventure Time, it just happened to be sitting here organically. A spokesperson for Foresight told Insider that it was initially excited by the potential increase in visibility after Ken Walks's armchair sleuthing went viral. I love that phrasing, armchair investigator, armchair sleuthing. The company had apparently not only promoted Ken Walks's TikTok viral marketing efforts on their own personal pages, on posts in Start engine, but also in their LinkedIn posts, which Meredith Lynch also made TikTok videos about. Ken is not alone in using this reprehensible tactic for marketing the app. Check out this boy boss, Stephen Eddy. He's actually the CEO of Foresight, and I want to show you his LinkedIn post the other day. So here is a LinkedIn post from Steven where he brags about the fact that the app has gone viral because of Ken's marketing techniques. So clearly Ken is not like 
manufacturing this all on his own. He has a whole team of people who are like, yes, go for it. And so basically it goes on to say the same thing that we saw on that startup website, but it explains how, you know, Ken took an unrelated video and then he um, promoted foresight at the end. And then it goes on to say that Ken plans to start mixing a foresight reference into the end of every other post. Considering how viral Ken knew he was going, like, this is so strategic. And if you watch the video of the first time that he mentions foresight, you will see it is a video talking about a tragic death of someone in Chicago. So Ken and Steven, by the way, who I feel like is not innocent in all of this, have created a marketing strategy where they are profiting off going viral by talking about people's absolute tragedies that they don't really have anything to do with other than the fact that they want people to download their, in my opinion, not very exciting app. The LinkedIn posts have since been deleted. The company added that since it's learned the fuller details of the situation, it will ensure that employees no longer intermingle personal matters with those of the company. While Ken brought energy and ambition to our team as CMO, the unrelated developments that have unfolded in his private life over the last couple of weeks require both parties to move forward in other directions, the company said. We wish him the best in his his transition which like also gives me it leaves me a bad taste in my mouth about the company too because like yeah ken is a crummy guy but also like when he was popping you totally rode with him promoted him stuck by him but the second he has backlash you're like oh whoa, whoa whoa no we no we don't associate with that no we did not agree with the way that he was promoting the company not at all no like we actually had no idea that was happening even though we promoted it on like our linkedin and star engine it's just like okay sure and now ken walks has stopped making videos on the drive and dive kings that are most likely a thousand percent not actually happening. He lost his brand as the trustable and respectable tech bro, and he lost his role as CMO in his app Foresight. And if only he had the foresight to see that all of this would happen. I I'm sorry, I had to. Within the span of a few months, Ken Walks lost almost everything that he's been working towards, all because he got carried away with the story and the excitement of viral fame. And now it's unknown where Ken Walks will go next. We all want to feel loved. We all want to achieve something great. We all want to save people and feel like a hero. So Ken Walks created that life for himself. In his own story, he was a beloved hero who was solving a mystery, saving victims, and becoming a true crime sensation. But Ken Walks was living a lie. Part of me sympathizes for Ken Walks because I know deep down we all can relate to that feeling of wanting and needing to be loved, but I empathize mostly with the people who were found in the lakes and with their families. The families who needed closure and whose closure was prolonged because of Ken Walks. I hope more wannabe influencers do not try to copy Ken Walks by creating fake true crime scenarios because this is a dangerous way to become famous, not only because you will crash and burn, but also because you will hurt so many families of the deceased in the process. And so that's all for today's video on the story of Ken Walks. Even though this was not the most joyous video, I hope it was at least enlightening and informative. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for making it to the end. I always appreciate people who do since I put so much time and effort into my videos. And if you did make it to the end, comment armchair investigator. Thank you so much to Semperd for sponsoring this video. Definitely check out the links below for an awesome discount and I hope you are doing well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!